I'm Paul Cleary, Ecosystem Architect at Venify. The purpose of this video is to help you start building an integration to the Venify platform as quickly as possible. Please feel free to jump around to relevant sections and don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions at all during the development process. First, we'll get a very brief background on Venify, the problems that we solve for our mutual customers. Next, we'll start to dive into the Venify platform and take a peek into the future of Venify as we learn about the difference between Trust Protection Platform and Venify Cloud. It will be important to understand how our users interact with the platform, so we'll then turn and look at different user interfaces available to customers. And that will lead nicely into an explanation of the policy tree, which is what security administrators in an organization would use to configure the certificate policy ultimately consumed by the other teams and applications throughout the organization. And then finally, we'll take a look at where to go to get logs from the Venify platform in case the need to troubleshoot ever arises, as well as outline any next steps for beginning development and getting support from the Venify ecosystem team. So who is Venify? Venify is the creator, innovator, and market leader in machine identity management. And to understand what machine identity management really is, we first have to understand what a machine identity is. And so in every organization's network, there are really two kinds of actors. You have people and machines. And people use usernames and passwords to authenticate and gain access to machines, servers, services, and applications. But machines also need to authenticate to those services and applications, as well as to other machines. However, they don't use usernames and passwords. Instead, they use something called machine identities, which are things like TLS and code signing certificates, SSH keys and IoT device certificates. Uh, organizations typically spend about $10 billion every year protecting human identities. And now over the past couple of years are just now finally starting to think about protecting machine identities in the same way. Unfortunately, the bad guys have already figured this out. And so over those past couple of years, they've dedicated more and more time to compromising machine identities. And so this is where the Venify platform comes into play. Today, when our professional services organization first gets into a customer, they typically have a set of rules that they follow or a, a pathway to get to full automation, which is our ultimate goal. And so this process starts with an inventory discovery. We really need to figure out all of the machine identities in a customer organization and bring them into the visibility of the Venify platform. And we do that in a couple of different ways that you can see on the screen here now. Uh, we can do just standard network discovery where we reach out and do a TLS handshake and pull in the certificate that way. Unfortunately, that doesn't get us the private key when it comes time to do renewals and automation of provisioning of that private key. And so we also do some other stuff for discovery purposes as well. We have an agent-based discovery for those systems that maybe are in a DMZ or air-gapped from the, uh, the Venify platform. Uh, we do onboard discovery of specific applications like IIS servers and F5 uh, big IP devices. Lots of integrations in our Venify marketplace allow for the Venify platform to reach out to one of these devices that essentially consume certificates and pull in all of the private key and certificate data that already exists on those devices. This really helps customers get a full inventory a lot quicker than if they were to manually import those certificates. And we also have the ability to do a certificate authority import. So we can reach out to your Microsoft CA, your DigiCert instance, um, along with 40 other industry standard certificate authorities and, and import the inventory that way. Once we have the inventory in place, we can start to generate some reporting and get better analysis on the artifacts that are in our infrastructure currently. So we start to see maybe there are some old certificates out there that expired years ago, but they still exist out on legacy systems. Or maybe you still have certificates that are being renewed today, but they're using older algorithms or um, lower bit sizes for their encryption keys. And so these are the types of things that will come to the surface through the reporting and analysis of the Venify platform. Once that, is, once that is in place, you can start to enforce policy on all of those applications and certificate authorities. 
And so this allows you to, this allows the security team rather and your PKI admins to basically abstract a lot of information away from your end users and set policy for those applications through the Venify platform. So you can say things like, I don't want any certificates to be issued with a key size less than 2048, or I want to only use six month certificates for this specific application, as opposed to the standard one year that DigiCert offers, things like that. Once you have policy assigned and starting to be enforced, you can start to assign roles for self-service. And I mentioned this a little bit on step three there, basically the security team can abstract a lot of the information away that end users don't really need to care about. An end user maybe cares about the common name of their certificate and where they're going to deploy it to, but a lot of the subject information, like who the organization unit is on that certificate or the division or the locality, things like that, they can be built into the Venify policy so that it's not needed to be entered every single certificate request. And then finally, as I mentioned previously, the end goal for all of our engagements is to get to that full automation stage. Um, really the benefit there is you are preventing human made errors because you have a, a process that's tested and proven in non-prod environments before you move into production. And you also have the ability to fully automate things like TLS inspection provisioning. So when a certificate gets renewed, perhaps on an application server, your TLS inspection devices get a copy of that renewed certificate instantly from the Venify platform, eliminating that gap in visibility. There are a couple of different integration methods with the Venify platform. The best case scenario would be direct product integration, right? So there's no additional downloads required from the end customer. This is strictly using our REST APIs or our vCert library, which is a command line utility and software development kit in Go, Java, Python, and Ruby that would allow you to build in functionality from the Venify platform directly into your product. If that's not available, we do have some other integration options as well. The adaptable framework is a great way to get started quickly. We have, I would say about 85 to 90% of the development work done already. And it's up to you to put in all of the necessary API calls to your platform that would be wrapped up inside of the functions of the adaptable framework. And there's another video specifically on the adaptable framework on this channel if you have further questions about that. The platform process that I just covered is more targeted toward trust protection platform, which is our on-prem offering that's used by the world's leading banks, airlines, retailers, and healthcare providers. This is the platform that really the vast majority of our customers use today and will likely continue to use for the foreseeable future. Venify Cloud is certainly where things are headed, but there is still a little bit of work to be done in order to bring feature parity with TPP. That said, Venify Cloud is already the perfect solution for a specific set of problems that customers experience today, focused primarily on two things, predicting potential certificate-based outages and enabling developers to get machine identities for their applications at the speed they normally work, which is instantly. Customers can already start to see the value of Venify Cloud, and so we do have some early adopters. As for the interfaces into each of these platforms, both do have their own robust REST API but building in an integration that accommodates both platforms can be cumbersome because of the API differences. If at all possible, we recommend using our vCert SDK, which acts as a translation layer for both of those APIs and allows you to develop against both platforms simultaneously. vCert is available in Golang, Java, Python, and Ruby. Now let's see where our Venify administrators spend their time by looking at the Venify user interfaces. For the rest of this video, we'll be focused on Trust Protection Platform. There will be another video on navigating the Venify Cloud UI on this channel in the near future. Web Admin is our legacy UI, and it's still where a lot of customers prefer to do a lot of their work simply because they're familiar with it. It still is required for some 
very specific functions, but for the most part, everything you can do in web admin, you can also do within the Aperture UI. And Aperture, as you can imagine, is our newer interface where all new functionality is being developed. It's a little bit more modern. It has a lot easier um, mechanisms for end users to have more of a self-service approach to getting certificates that are configured by the security administrators. The policy tree is available in slightly different forms through both web admin and Aperture. And for the most part, settings will be configurable in either location with one or two exceptions, namely subject alternative name types permitted on a given policy. Those, that's something that you have to configure within Aperture. And configuration of jobs, which represent automated scheduled work to be done by the Venify platform at specified intervals. Again, both of those are examples of things that must be configured using the Aperture UI. Pretty much everything else though is again, configurable from whichever UI you feel most comfortable in. Throughout the development process, it might be necessary to gather logs generated from the Venify platform. This is another of those items that is currently only available in web admin. The Venify platform has extensive logging and filtering built in that allows developers to track down the exact function, API call, or response that is causing an error and correct it quickly. The platform does have a single view of every log message captured with extensive filtering built in to get to the exact result that you're looking for quickly. Uh, however, I, I prefer to start with a more targeted approach. Uh, what we're seeing on the screen right now is the full default SQL channels. You'll see, again, really every log message that the Venify platform captures come through this screen. And here you see that uh, you do have some pretty powerful filtering that's available depending on the type of log message that you're looking for. So here we're going to do a, a filter based on the event, and I'm just going to do a, a quick search to capture anything DigiCert related. So I'll do a search for DigiCert. It will give me all of the events that capture that DigiCert string, and I can select them, bring them over to my selected list, and this will now filter out anything that falls within those DigiCert events. Again, though, what I like to start with is kind of a more targeted approach. Each object in the tree on the left-hand side has logs associated with it that can be viewed directly by clicking first on the object itself, so the DigiCert CA template in this case, the general tab in the center pane there, and what this does is gives you a at-a-glance view of all the logs taken for this specific object in the Venify platform. And so if you can't find what you're looking for here, then it might be a good time to go take a look at the main SQL channel. And as part of your development environment, you also have access to the ecosystem developer documentation, which provides guidance about design patterns and offers quick links to relevant pattern platform documentation. If you happen to be developing an adaptable driver, please be sure to take note of the built-in debug logging functionality to help customers diagnose issues if they are ever encountered in production environments. All right, and so next steps. If you're developing an integration using vCert or strictly for Venify Cloud, you'll need to sign up for a Venify Cloud account using your company or developer email address. Once your account has been created, please email me at paul.cleary at venify.com to have it flagged as a developer account with extended access. If you're developing an integration for Trust Protection Platform, or you would like to test your vCert integration against the full platform, then you'll need access to a hosted development instance. At some point, you'll receive an invitation from our environment provider, CloudShare, which will let you turn the environment on and off as needed during the development process. If you have any issues at all during this process, please reach out and let me know. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. And again, if, if you do have any questions during development, please feel free to reach out. My email is on the screen now. Thanks a lot.